Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Feel of Dreams on ACTN. I'm Steve David and I'm your host. And today I want to talk about some um, TF, TTFA matters, which includes the Super League, the Pro League, and so on and so on. Um, I have with me um, the president of the Super League and also a board member of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association, Mr. Keith Lucloy. Welcome to the set, Keith. Thank you very much, Steve. Pleasure always. Yes. All right, good. Good to have you, and um, we have a lot to talk about today. Yes, for sure. Also um, with, with us is Narada Wilson, who is my co-host. Welcome to the set, Narada. Always a pleasure being here, Steve. I look forward to having this interview with Mr. Lucloy mm -hmm. today. Keith, I'm so happy and glad to have you here today because there is so much issues out there that hearsay. So I want to get it from the host's mouth. And um, there's issues with multiple things. And my viewers is, it would, would have a treat today to hear about all the issues. And maybe you could put some of these to rest for us. Um, because we hear, about, we hear about court issues. We hear about the TTF, um, TTFA wanting to run the whole operation. We hear about the Super League and the uh, Pro League coming together. So we can start anyway. Well, um, um, as, 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 as you see, right, um, there's a wide range of issues. It's never a dull moment in football. Right. Every day presents um, some new challenge, some, some new issue. From my standpoint, my perspective, the two main issues of the day are the, the, the high court case that I filed and won against the TTFA as a board member um, of the TTFA. And the other one, of course, is the pending or the potential um, merger uh, of the two leagues to form a brand new elite national league, whatever it is going to be called, which is an idea that I have espoused and articulated for many years now. It, it is an idea that I support fully in principle. So um, perhaps we could start with the court case, um, which I filed in the high court in uh, August of last year, um, and which I won uh, just, just a few days ago. In, uh, in March, it was, what was it, March 20th, I, I won the case. What was this case about? On uh, Boxing Day 2017, knowing that I had been um, appointed to the, by my league to, the, to represent it, the Super League to represent it on the TTFA board, I fielded a number of questions and sent an email to uh, Justin Latopi, then General Secretary, copied to David John Williams as president, asking a series of questions on technical matters, referee matters, and financial matters. Um, Anton Cornell attempted to answer my questions on financial matters, not fully to my satisfaction, but I did get some information which was shared with the board. Um, similarly, on referee matters, Wayne Caesar, the head of the refereeing department, provided some answers, not, again, not to my full satisfaction, but that what we got was shared with the board. But I got no responses on the financial matters. The financial matters had to do with the overall financial management of the TTFA, and specifically with the Home of Football Project in Coover, which is funded by uh, FIFA to the tune of 2.75 million US dollars, about 18, 19 Trinidad and million Trinidad and Tobago dollars. I kept asking for months between um, December 26th of 2017 and August of 2017, mm -hmm. uh, of 2018, sorry. I kept asking um, questions repeatedly and I kept my email trail, which the judge was quite happy to refer to because all of this was tendered in evidence mm -hmm. in support of my case. Never a response about anything material. So ultimately, I decided as a court, uh, 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 to resort to, to, to the high court as a board member of the TTFA to get access the information which a, 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 a board member should have by right, right. by reason of his, him or, or her being a member of the board. And this is any board, not just the board of the TTFA, which ultimately is a position that was supported by, by the judge, um, Ronnie Budusing, And he made a number of important points in delivering his judgment. 
The first of these, to quote him directly, is that the antidote to corruption is transparency. Mm -hmm. I want to repeat that. The antidote to corruption is transparency. He also went on to say that it is elementary that a board member should have access to information for which he or she is liable. This is, a, I mean, personally liable. Mm -hmm. I repeatedly made the point in the TTFA board that each one of the board members is personally liable for any financial malfeasance or mismanagement in the TTFA. Mm -hmm. And I kept making the example of um, Oliver Camps, who had to sell one of his properties. Fortunately for him, he had more than one. I don't know the man's business, but he had to sell a property, as I understand it, to pay for debt incurred under his presidency that he says he didn't know about. And I kept making the point to them that Keith Lucloy and his wife worked hard to buy one property and nobody's going to claim it Right. for reasons that I am not aware of. Some of the board members, the majority of them, apparently don't care. So I went to court, and the court ruled, therefore, that and gave seven days, which expired on the 27th of um, last month, days ago, that David John Williams and or Kamara David, now the general secretary, the new general secretary, had to bribe me, provide me with a, a range of documents. All right? Some documents were provided, not all. Um, for example, I asked for the, 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 the financial ledger, the, which is the, the, the statement of income and expenditure of the TTFA from the time of John Williams' election in November of 2015 to the present. They gave me 15, 16, 17. I received nothing for 18. It is important that I receive all. And I'll say it for the public, why? Because the TTFA has been playing, our national men's team has been playing a number of recent um, uh, international matches, friendly matches. We, we played United Arab Emirates, we played Thailand, we played Iran, and we played Wales. I want to know what is the income and expenditure surrounding these matches because I've asked in the board to no response. What are we making from these uh, matches? What are we mm -hmm. spending on these matches? No response. So I need to be seeing that in that TTFA ledger, and that's just one example. But in addition to that, the judge also ordered that I be given contracts or, or be given access to the contracts, and I am entitled to make a copy of any document that is there um, for the work that is virtually, I suppose, at an end, because we understand that it is going to, the, the, the home of football is going to be inaugurated in, in April. We are in April. So I have to take it that the work is done and that the expenditure is, is gone, is, is finished. No contracts. What I received after the deadline by email is a series of PDF documents. A PDF document is not an original document. And without casting aspersions on anyone in the day and age of the word processor and cut and paste, I want to see original documents. documents right. I will make the copies. And I was not provided with, with contracts for all of the expenditure either, either. So I'm saying that they have not fulfilled the terms of the order issued by Judge Ronnie Budu Singh. So what have we done? Yesterday, we sent, in case they are saying that they don't know what's in the order, we sent a copy of the order, which their lawyer should have provided to um, David John Williams and Kamara David, the, rep the legal representatives of the TTFA. And we have also attached to that a statement of what the penalties for contempt of court are. Because if you don't fulfill a lawful order of the court, you are in contempt of court, which carries consequences. Right. The judge will decide what he wants to do with them if he decides to levy punishment against them for not fulfilling the orders the, um, the, the order that he issued. I also need to say this. One of the penalties potentially is jail time. Keith Lucloy is not in the business of assessing jail time against anybody or sending anybody to jail. My concern is good governance in the TTFA and transparency and accountability in financial matters. That is what I am after. Right. Now, I had to go to court to try and pursue that. 
if they want to break the order of the court and put themselves at the, at the disposal and the mercy of the judge, that is their business. They are doing that, not me. I want it to be clear because I do not want anybody, if it comes to that, to be seen, look like looking to send people to jail. That's the judge's business. My business is to see financial documents and to establish what is the financial situation of the TTFA. Let me make one statement because I've spoken long enough and I'll pause. The TTFA is currently, which is why I asked to see the overall picture, the TTFA is currently in debt to the tune of over $30 million. David John Williams presented to the board and then to the general meeting, the 2018 general meeting, which overlaps into 2019, a deficit budget for 2019, one year, of $40 million. A deficit budget for one year of $40 million to add to the 30 odd million dollars we already owe. We have some big financial judgments coming down from the court if they are already in the pipeline for 2019. I'm talking about Sheldon Phillips. He's gonna get a judgment later this month. I'm talking about Stephen Hart. I'm talking about Carolina Morachi. I'm talking about um, Kendall Walks, right? Huge judgments, conceivably, conceivably, really in real terms. The TTFA could be in debt to the tune of more than $100 million by the end of this year. How do we pay this? And people need to know what the true status of the debt is and how we're going to address this, how we're going to climb out of this. And we cannot do that unless the books are opened up and unless we know exactly what is happening up in Kufa. So you have not, the seven days that was uh, given, for the presentation that these documents have not been fulfilled. Well, the seven days have gone, but we haven't received all of the documents. Right, yes. Now, I cannot march into the TTFA office and demand they open the files. I have to go back to the court, and right. the court will have to deal with it. Now, let's say John Williams is looking at this show and wants to respond to you. It's very okay to play back yours. Um, information and then let him respond. Absolutely. Right. Because I, again, I repeat, my interest is in democracy within the TTFA, good governance, good governance, transparency and accountability. You know, these are big words with a lot of ease of democracy and trans, you know, transparency and accountability, a lot of ease. But this is the essence the essence of the issue in the TTFA, and this is the essence of how we're going to resolve the problems facing us. The, problem in, the problems in the TTFA are myriad. It's not just about financial issues, which provide the foundation of, of, of any solution. We, we're talking about the issue of, of uh, club football, grassroots football, women's football, national teams program. Yes, there's a whole range of issues um, that are not being addressed, which collectively have created a crisis in the TTFA. Nobody out there, forget whether you like Lucloy, don't like Lucloy, like John Williams, don't like John Williams, or fed up with everybody. Nobody in their right mind could honestly sit back and say, I am content with what I'm seeing in football in Trinidad and Tobago today. It is in a crisis. Nobody could dispute that. Now, I listened to the show on... I-95 with Andre Batiste and John Wooden. I don't know if you, you've, you've heard I was told about it. Okay. All right. And, uh, well, if you didn't hear it, I was going to ask you, did you hear it and what you thought about some of the stuff that was said? Well, uh, I, I was told about it. I, w I, will, I will be frank. I'm, I, am, I am known to be a blunt guy. I knew of the show. I refused to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Some people tried to encourage me to listen. I said, no, on principle, I'm not going to listen because that is going to be PR. And then people, board members of the TTFA and followers of football and owners of clubs and so on who listen, the, the, the verdict was unanimous that it was a lot of PR lacking in substance, no real answers and no real solutions provided. Um, because I'll be blunt again, I think that David John Williams and his cohort, his, his cronies, they are in survival mode. That um, their concern right now is to launch the um, home of football. Mm -hmm. And despite the rot 
that has set in in football to hold it up as um, you know the, the the grand achievement of his five years, his four years. I beg your pardon. In 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 power in his, in in the position of the president, and seek to use that to persuade people to forget about everything else that is happening in the football, and to vote him back into power in in a few months in November um, of 2019. But as I've always said all along, while we're spending 20 million dollars to produce a nice building, you know, concrete blocks and bricks, beds. I have no problem with the construction. I imagine that it is a solid construction, right, and meeting technical requirements. That is not my issue. My issue is not the end result, which is the buildings and the fields. My issue is how we went about it, the procedure and the lack of transparency in the entire thing. And as I have been saying, while we have been growing grass, the horse has been starving because we're spending $20 million on this, on this facility but women's football has collapsed. National teams have collapsed. Elite football has collapsed. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Grassroots football has collapsed. Youth football has collapsed. And we have many examples of what is happening. Look at the Pro League youth football um, competition, right? Which is stumbling along. Not all the teams are playing. And some of the teams that, uh, that are playing are not m boys who belong to a Pro League club, but play, they are boys students in QRC. And, 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 and elsewhere. This is not professional football. This is not organized youth football. This is a sweat. I'll say it openly. This is a sweat. And this cannot pass um, as proper development. So I refuse absolutely to overlook or bypass the crisis in football and to focus only on a facility in which, and I'll ask the question, we are going to put who? Who are we going to put in there? Our national team programs has collapsed. Look at what happened with the under-20 team that went to Florida under Latopy. Look at what is happening with the under-17 team that will also go to Florida under Stone John. Look at what happened with the Narada, with the women's under-15, the women's senior team that went to Florida in a, in a state of decay and collapse. Who are we going to be putting in there? No doubt, this is why, he is trying to convince us that we must use this home of football for sports tourism. So bring swimmers from the United States, bring, I, I, I don't know, cyclists from Canada or what have you, but our own players and our own teams that this thing is being built for, where are they in all of this? Let's take a break. When we come back, uh, we will continue there. And I'll give Narada a chance to ask you the question that he had, one of the questions he has to ask. Viewers, we'll be right back after the short break. Every Sunday at 2 p.m. on ACTN The Voice, we'll be taking you on a journey down memory lane with our Sunday classics. Relive the moments. Bonanza at 2 p.m. Little House on the Prairie at 3 p.m. Gilligan's Island at 4 p.m. Family Matters at 4.30 p.m. Hogan's Heroes at 5 p.m. The Jeffersons at 5.30 p.m. This is Sunday Classics on ACTN The Voice. You're now changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. But, but my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Only by not tell me now. <laughs> In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David and I'm your host. Okay, welcome back viewers. Um, I want to ask Keith, one question before I give Nurada's question. So, we, the viewers, you don't take this as any political um, thing. Keith, are you going to run for president? No. Excellent question, Steve. When, when I come on this show, I know I'm yeah. going to get pointed right. and, and legitimate questions. And the answer to that is no. 
I have no interest, and I've said it before, everywhere. Um, I have no interest in being the president of the TTFA. I have been in football from, from my childhood, and I like to make the point. All of us, we, we, we love our mother, mm -hmm. but all of us have been in love with a woman. That's two different kinds of love. I remain and right. will always remain in love with football. Right. right? When you're in love with a woman, the heat and the passion that you have for her is a different thing to the love you have for your mother. I am right. in love with football. Right. I still have that burning desire to see football do well, to see my country, which I represented as you did, do well every time we go, when we cross the white line right. and go out onto the pitch. So my interest, again, is democracy in, in Trinidad and Tobago Football Association, transparency and good governance, and progress for our football in all of its aspects, beach football, futsal, and all the variations of the 11 aside, male and female. And I will therefore um, support any candidate or group of candidates who I believe give us the best chance for progress. We all have a history. Okay. We all have weaknesses. We all have done something wrong. We have all have done something we could have done better. There are no perfect candidates. But right. I will support who I believe could do a good job to carry us forward. All right, Nirada, you wanted to ask yeah. Keith? Um, you do wear many hats. Um, at this moment, I think a lot of pressure is coming onto you because you're taking an active role and changing somewhat the, the usual dynamic of an active board member. I think for far too long, Trinidadians, we've become comfortable with having a president sitting in office and the board members are merely a position to fill seats. Say it as it is. Yes, man. He, and he's not he, a yes, man. And I think, right? Mr. Lecloy, okay. is, you're taking on a lot because you're actually <laughs> yeah. doing things that are, are your right and it's not normal for us. Yeah. However, one of the missions that you have is also leading the Super, Super League and now taking the professional league to another level. So two questions. Why this sort of more active role in the football? What do you think spurred it on? And two, what are some of the dynamics or some of your thoughts or views as to going forward with professional football to take care of that? Again, eh, two, two, two very excellent questions. The, the, the first one, I am by nature an outspoken person. This is my character. This is my personality. Sometimes, a lot of the time, it rubs people the wrong way. But I prefer to put what I think on the table. And I always like people to put what they think on the table for me to, to assess and to judge and to absorb. Then we know what the lay of the land is and then we could, we could treat. Yeah, we could treat like mature people. Mm -hmm. We could disagree, we could um, agree as the case might be, but it's all out front. What I do not like um, is people who can't speak what they are thinking. Um, for whatever reason, some people are afraid, some people are not strong enough, some people like to curry favor, some people like to be yes people. I won't only say yes men because we have yes women too in the TTFA. Um, so I, I like to put it out there. Now the truth is, that and I'll, be, I'll be frank, not to be redundant, but I'll be frank. Until I assumed my position in the TTFA board in March, a lot of stuff was happening that people just sat and accepted. All right? And when I got in there, John Williams was never happy, but in my very first meeting, I made the point to the assembled board. I said, I am here to represent my constituency, which is the Super, Super League, League, the correct. clubs that have put me here, to represent the interests of the Super League clubs, but also to represent the broader interests of football as a whole. I am not here as a member of the David John Williams slate that won the election. So I am not here to support your program. And I put that as my very first statement. I put it on the table in the, in the TTFA boardroom meeting. Now, there are people who will say, but you was there under Jack Warner and never said anything. Mm -hmm. They say it all the time. I have two responses to that. One, you don't know what I was saying when I was working under Jack Warner. In the first instance, in the first place, when I was working in Jack, under Jack Warner, I was not a politician. You could call me a politician now because I'm a, I'm a, a, a holder of office in the of Super office. League and a holder of office in the TTFA board. I hold office. I was what I like to call 
a civil servant under John, uh, under um, yep. Jack Warner. I, I used to tell Jack myself, listen, because I had many disagreements with him. He gave me respect. He never disrespected me. He would always listen, then he would do what he wanted. But I always used to tell him, I am a PS, you are a politician. I give you the benefit of what I think is good advice. Then it's your decision to do what you want with it. Mm -hmm. But my job is to tell you what I think. Mm -hmm. And I would do that. Many times we had, a, we, we had arguments even. And I remember one day, late in his game, asking him, I said, Mr. Warner, what do you want to be your legacy when you leave football? What do you want to be remembered for? You want to be remembered for the good things that you did? And he did. He did many good things. Or you want to be remembered for the bad things, and he did bad things. And I asked him, right, because I was never afraid to, to, to tell him what I thought, mm -hmm. right? So that, that, that is my first response. People do not know what I debated with Jack Warner and his cohort, right? Uh, the people around him, and I was one of them trying to argue for democracy, good governance, and transparency in the TTFA. The difference is this time that be, I am not a an employee of, of the TTFA. As an employee of the TTFA, I could not go into the media, for example, and say things. Right. Now I am a holder of office. Right. And if I try to resolve an issue internally in the TTFA, and it is being ignored, then I'm going to go to the public with it. And right. I've, be, I've been doing that. Right. All right? So um, that is my response to that. But my, my, my second response to the cynics is this. I live in a house. I have a neighbor. And the neighbor beats his wife. Not my real neighbor, eh? I'm making an example. Right. right? The neighbor beats his wife, and I hush my mouth the first time I hear bawling for licks. And the second time he does it, what am I to say? Don't intervene. Because the first time when he beat her, you did nothing. So continue doing nothing. Am I wrong to say, nah, boy, it's too much now. This, he can't do it again. I go in next door. Am I wrong to say that? Yeah. Or should I say, he beat her once, so I can't say nothing because I said nothing the first time. That is ludicrous. Right. And therefore, if people want to accuse me of being, of being quiet before. before, well, I ain't quiet now. I ain't quiet now. So your second question, um, which is the issue of how do we go forward? Those who have been following know that um, with the prompting of UEFA, we have entered, the TT Pro League and the, and the Super League have entered into discussion on the formation of one new elite league, mm -hmm. which I have always said we should have. I've, I've said that on this program. Mm -hmm. I've always maintained that. Right. That we should go back to the days of, call it what you will, when we had one national league and it will, it will have divisions. Sure. Tier one, tier two league, one league, two, premiership, championship, one first league. division, second division, that is immaterial. We're heading in that direction. We have been conducting a series of talks. There's a meeting, um, another meeting coming up in mere days when we will um, try to push the project forward. This project, to, to establish the details for your, your view in public, are one, Finance is going to come from the government of Trinidad and Tobago being um, the sport company. Correct. And also some finance is going, which is going to be financing for the first tier, which basically, not basically, which is entirely the 10 clubs of what is now the TT Pro League. Mm -hmm. And then um, finances is going to come from the, for the second tier from FIFA, which will constitute uh, member clubs of the Super League. Mm -hmm. So financing will come from different sources for the, the two tiers or divisions. Um, we have a concern that this money should be given to us, to us for the clubs ahead of the season and the financing that will go into the administration should come ahead of the season so that this thing could kick off as planned with the second tier kicking off in early June, the first week of June, the 7th of June to be precise. And the... Um, the first year kicking off on the 3rd of July. July. They have less teams. Yeah? Um, they will have 10. The, the, the second division will have 14. Mm -hmm. An issue arises um, regarding the clubs that do not make not, it into the second tier. Correct. Because the Super League has 20. 24 members. Yeah. Right. There's no thing. No. 
Right. This new league will <clears throat> cater for only 14. 10 will not make it. As it stands right now, three of those 10 are non-compliant members of the TTFA. They haven't submitted the correct, the correct documents, your audited statement, etc., right. etc. Et um, and that reduces it to seven. But so before you continue, in a case like where a team is not compliant or may not have all the documents in order, do they return to maybe a zonal league or exactly. they have to go forward and find... Well, they're suspended. Okay. Right, you're suspended from, from all participation in any TTFA matter. Okay, not only right, football correct. on the field, but any correct. matter. TTFA. You cannot attend a yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're suspended. Right. And until you rectify your situation, then you're not you're expelled, good. although the general meeting ultimately could decide to expel any member. Right. The general meeting uh, in the last, uh, uh, the 20, what is it, uh, 17 general meeting, which overlapped into 2018, expelled the Players Association and the Coaches Association because they had been doing nothing. nothing. They existed on paper mm -hmm. and they were expelled. Mm -hmm. So the general meeting could expel any member. But the first step is suspension. Now, when we come to the point of initiating, starting this league, the suspended members will not be eligible. Correct. Now, if they rectify the situation they, and they become eligible, they will have to go to another level of football because they would correct. not be included in the 14. Correct. Right. So to continue, in the, in the last board meeting, I made the point to the TTFA and I've made the point in the commission of the new league, which I'll come to very quickly, that these 10 clubs and the TTFA is now having its um, champion of champion playoffs to bring up two clubs from the regional um, association, no, yeah. zonal football. Right. These clubs, the TTFA will have to form some kind of, some new league for them to the play engineer, in yeah. because they will not be part of the new two-tier elite league. So what effectively it seems we're heading to is a new elite, elite league, one division, second division, first division, second division. Possibly. Then the surplus, if I could call them, the Super League clubs, clubs yeah. plus the two clubs that come up from the, the zones champion. in a third yeah. league. Correct. And then regional football, Correct. which right. is a fourth league or a fourth level, level right. split into the six different national associ um, regional associations. So... Um, very soon, if it all pans out, we could have four tiers, four tiers. of club football. Right. All right? But there's a, there's a lot of concerns that, you know, about if this thing could start on time. In the interim, as I said, we have a commission. That commission has two representatives from the uh, Super League, two representatives from the, the Pro League, uh, two independent members, Correct. and one representative from yep. the TTFA, a seven-member commission that will fashion something out of all of this, make a proposal to the TTFA board, which has to approve it, and ultimately send it to the general meeting of the TTFA, the general assembly. It used to be called the general council that has to approve all of this because this is a new body coming into being. And the, it, it has to be brought in by the general, um, general meeting. Is that in action yet? I mean, that, that body? Uh, well, so. we, as I said, right, we, we push into the, 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 the original plan um, of the TT Pro League and the TT Super League was that both leagues should run as normal this year mm -hmm. and that we should lay all of the groundwork, all of the framework to start next year. What do I mean by that? The legal and regulatory framework. What are the regulations of this league? What is the disciplinary code, the constitution, the electoral code, you know, everything? What are the committees we're going to have? We, we set all of that in place. We set the finances in place. Okay? We lay down everything that has to be done. We play off as normal Correct. this year, two leagues, and then we we, 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 in the off-season, which means in the period January 2020, to so June or May of 2020, we would initiate the league and kick it off in June right. as, as normal. We had a meeting of all the clubs in the two leagues on Ash Wednesday, and we were told um, that by the authorities that we had to do it this year, otherwise the sport money and the FIFA money would be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Now, that bullied the clubs. I'll be frank, that bullied the clubs. 
um, mm -hmm. who are seeing money on the table, free money on the table, and they said, okay, fine, we will start this year. Because under this program, each um, uh, pro league side club would get 50,000 US for the season, and each Super League club would get 10,000 US for the season. And then there's some prize money on offer. Um, in the Pro League or the First Division, it goes from first to fifth place. And in the Second Division or the Super League, it goes from first to fourth place. So when people saw free money and prize they money, they said, okay, 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 we're going to start this year. I personally, I go along with the democratic decision. I have my concerns that we could really do it properly. But um, it is a democratic decision. I respect it, and I'm pushing to try and make sure it, it, it could be implemented. Let me, let's, let's take a break, but when we come back, let's, let's follow up on that, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And if that don't start right, we'll be stumbling all the way through for a few years. Views will be right back after the short break. Looking for a safe place for the whole family? Well, now you've found it. We are ACTN The Voice, your family-friendly station. Whether it's current affairs, kids and classic TV, sport and community features, Christian and music programming, plus so much more, ACTN is the station for you. Join us each day for programming that puts morals, values and family first. We are ACTN The Voice, your family-friendly station. You're now changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. But, but my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Call it by not tell me now. <laughs> In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David, and I'm your host. Okay, viewers, welcome back. Uh, Keith, uh, before the break, you were, you were making the point, and, and again, that could be very detrimental to, to move forward. Um, and tell us was, why you told, said what you said about, hey, let's, let's take our time well, instead of running forward. I mean, it, it is a risk, right? Um, and if, if, if you allow me off camera, you said you only... You, you only have one chance to make a, mm -hmm. a first impression. I, I put it differently in my club, uh, right, San, uh, Santa Rosa. We have been very successful because in my life, I am the owner and the president. In my life, I like to make sure as much as I can that every step I take, every important step I take is weighted in favor of my succeeding. Right. I do not make... I could, be, I could take risk, but it has to be calculated risk that I figure would work in my favor. I like to succeed. I don't like to fail. And my caution to the clubs and the TT Pro League and the TT Super League clubs, um, they, they agreed um, when we had the initial meetings that we need to lay a careful groundwork and framework mm -hmm. so that this thing kicks off properly in 15 months' time or 16 months' time. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, the condition of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Club, or the condition of Trinidad and Tobago Football generally, is that it is hungry. Yes. And when you put free food, meaning free money on the table, the clubs are going to jump at it. So when it was said, we're going to give you this money to start your season, we're going to give you this money to run your competition, we're going to give you this money as prize money, and then you say you have to start have it to this year, otherwise we're going to withdraw it. Then the clubs hurriedly raised their hands on Ash Wednesday in the Kuva Cycling Velodrome and said, we're going along with that, we're taking the money, we're going to start this year. I repeat, that was a democratic decision. I argued against it and other people. Brent Sancho from uh, Central FC um, was not in favor of it, but it's a democratic That's decision. Right. We abide by it and we're going to push to try and make sure it succeeds. But there is a risk because if we cannot start properly and fall flat, the, the, the Trinidad and Tobago public is a cynical public and doesn't forgive you easily. Let me, let, let me say this. I look at 
Jamaican football streamed, right? I watch it uh, um, streamed, right, on, 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 on television mm -hmm. when I can. Mm -hmm. When you look at the crowds that attend Jamaican um, Premier League, what, what, what is it called? Red Stripe Red Premier Stripe. League matches. I looked at the high school champi track and track field and field championships field. in the national stadium just, what, days ago? Mm -hmm. The national stadium in Jamaica, which was 30-something thousand people, was crammed. Mm -hmm. The Jamaican people, is, you know, it is supporting sport. Is supporting sport. Our people is not. Uh, our people uh, they're not supporting um local sport, and therefore when we launch this league, we could talk about all the branding we want. You could brand and brand and brand. If your product isn't well organized and your product product doesn't touch people in a way that makes them make what I like to call a political decision. What is that political decision? It is this. I know there is La Liga on TV. I know there is EPL on TV. I know there is Serie A on TV. But I am making a political choice to go and support local club football. That's a conscious decision, right? And we have to present ourselves in the very best way to encourage that. So I, am cons I have concerns. Other people share them. But I repeat for the second or third time, we're pushing to try and make sure it comes off. I want you to explain to my viewers um, what the structure is going to be like because the, it sounds as though this year it's going to be the 10 pro teams with part of the Super League. 14. 14 with maybe seven, like you said. And, uh, and explain to them how the promotion right. relegation is going to happen. Well, if we... Um Let's start at the top. Mm -hmm. um, the first division, let's call it that, whatever it's going to be named. The first division in 2019, uh, this year and next year, 20, will have no relegation. Right. However, in 2019, one team is going to be promoted from the second division to make it an 11 yeah, team for first division in 2020. And then in 2020, another one team is going to be, be promoted from the second division to make it a 2021. 12 team first division. Right. Then it's closed, and then um, we're going to introduce relegation. So from 2021, there will be promotion and relegation between first and second. Right. The second division will open at 14 this year, it's going to remain 14 thereafter. And a decision could be made, but I, I doubt we're going to see a 16 or 18 team second right. division. But you will see relegation. Number. But, promotion. thank you, Steve, you're going to see um, relegation to the lower tier, right. which is going to be this tier that the TTFA is going to have to create. Right. Um, uh, one or two teams, and coming up from that to tier into the set, which is outside right. of this new league. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's outside of this new league. Um, you're going to have promotion and relegation there, and then you're going to have promotion and relegation back to the zones, zones and right. up from the zones. Because let's remember, in England, let's, let's, let's take England, um, the, the, the championship is not part of the EPL. Right. The EPL is a league unto itself, yeah. but there's promotion and relegation. So this new league is going to have two divisions, but it's going to be connected by way of promotion and relegation to what is below it. Right. Yes? So that, that is how it is going to work. So for the first time in many, many years, we're going um, to have what I call democracy on the field. We all play this sport at a high level too, right? Your misfortune is that you were robbed of playing at the highest level in a World Cup. I say robbed, <laughs> right? But a referee was punished. Right, right. A referee was punished, so we have to say robbed, right. okay? But what is the true essence of sport? The true essence is, of sport is that Regardless of who your father is, how much money your family got in the bank, who is your name, what's the color of your skin, what's your ethnicity, what dictates your rise or your fall, and how far you rise or how high you fall is your performance on the field of play. That is democracy of sport. I believe in that. Right? So now for the first time, the democracy of sport is going to say who could get to the top tier and who and must stay in the second tier or who must fall out 
of the second tier because now the pro the top division is going to be opened up one of the ways that this is going to be facilitated is that the winner of the second division this year and i hope it's going to be i intend for it to be my club mm. the santa rosa right the, the the winner of the uh we have won it uh two of the last three years i still uh, i'm still mad that we didn't get the hat trick because in, we won it in 16 we lost it on the last day of 2017 and we won it back in 2018 last year we intend to win it again in 2019 because the winner that goes up to the first division is guaranteed a hundred thousand us that is theirs to help turn that club from the super league as right. it is now which okay. is not a professional club right. Right. into a professional club keith also um is TFA going to try to ease their way back into controlling th this league, or do we form a body that controls top tier, second tier? That? This, this, again, is a very pointed question. There's that debate. We are very determined that the TTFA is not to control and run this league. Right. The clubs of the Super League, the clubs of the, of the Pro League, fled the TTFA almost 20 years ago to go off on their own. Right. The Pro League was formed to run itself, and Tony Harford um, was given a franchise with all sport promotion to run uh, the Super League, and the TTFA has never run club football, elite club football since then. Right. I am not going to sit and allow that. There are people who share that view. I know Sancho shares that view and other people as well. We're forming a new league. It must be autonomous from the TTFA. We are under the umbrella of the TTFA. Correct. We abide by the rules of the TTFA, Correct. but we run our affairs. Right. Yes, and I'm going, I'm going to hold to that. The, the National Association has its sphere of influence and responsibility. It must run national teams, women's football, youth football, coach education, grassroots football, all of that. It must run. You see elite club football, leave it to the elite clubs to run. Why? When we look around the world, even the new Canadian Premier League, right. that Santa Rosa, at the end of last season, sent... Two players and a, and, right. and a coach too, Derek King, Akim Froggy, Garcia, and Andre Rampersad. Mm -hmm. Andre Rampersad joined Santa Rosa when he was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. we sent, he spent 10 years with us. He went one year away and then he came back. And we sent him there. All right? Um, um, this, is, this is what it is all about, right? Creating a, 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 a pipeline and we send them there. But the point I want to make is that in the new Canadian Premier League, the, the, um, the Canadian Soccer Association is its name. They don't control it. Don't control. The Mexican Federation doesn't control the, the, um, the, the La Liga in Mexico. Correct. The Spanish Federation doesn't control La Liga in Spain. The USSF doesn't control MLS. And the TTFA should not control this new league, whatever it is called. But what, what, what is the, the atmosphere like? What is the... Maybe the TFA is waking up now saying, there might be money in this. Let me, let me try to... Absolutely, to that this. is the case. Okay. Absolutely, that is the case. So and, how we keep them and, and that money, that money is going to belong to my club and the other clubs in that league. We have already had that discussion. Mm -hmm. And what we have said we want from them and be insisting on it is a memorandum of agreement, which is a legal contract, which is going to define what are the responsibilities of the TTFA and what are the responsibilities of the league. Any television contract or, or, or broadcast contract, which is where the real money in modern sport is, right. is going to be the property of this new league mm -hmm. and its members. Right. And that money is going to be our money. I guarantee the public, the viewing public, I am going to stand up for that because the product is mine. Right. And yours. Right. Right. And his, the owners of the clubs, the, the boards of the club, it is our product and when we sell it that money is ours then we're going to have a formula like we have in the super league right now about what the share is going to be based on your place based on this based on that whatever we're going to have how a formula to share the money right but the ttfa does not enter into this as far as look is concerned this is our product when you sell your national team matches you don't we don't get that. a share we have no share <coughs> to get so you sell your national team matches we will sell our club football. That money is ours. Right. You right, eh? <laughs> Yes. So um, we have seen different reincarnations of sport in Trinidad and Tobago on a whole. And I think football has been one of them that has seen it time and time again. 
So it's something, obviously, aside from the marketing, the pressure that is on this, the members of this commission to put the right product forward. My concern is, are the persons that are in the position in the league, the owners, the administrators, are they ready for a new product, successful new product? We've seen it branded time and time again. I would use there was Stanford T20 cricket. When CPL yeah. came, we had high expectations. It mm -hmm. remained there. Mm -hmm. We've seen Pro League. We've seen quite another Super League came back again. How are we to guarantee? Are they prepared at this time? You have, you have four minutes, Keith, to give it. Well, that, 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 that is a, that is a, a 40 minute question. Right. Not four, but um, you're, raising, you're raising a vital <clears throat> question because the quality of the product is only as good as the people who produce the product. And by that, I refer not only to the players, but the people who handle the players, the coaches, and the people who manage the entire enterprise, sure. which is the, the club owners, the club managers, and the people who run the league. You're absolutely right. And I'll be blunt, and I'll answer you directly. A lot of the people who run our football have no place running football. They have no clue how to run it. I'm going to take licks for that. But I accustom my back broad. Okay, because what has happened, we like, to, we like to talk about football, and I've made this point repeatedly in TTFA board meetings in the Super League and elsewhere. We like to say, well, football is a grassroots sport. And what, 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 what remains silent is equal sign, we could have low standards. I reject that completely, absolutely reject it. There is no natural and inherent equation between something being grassroots and something being inferior, mismanaged, yes? Mm -hmm. Improperly financed and totally mishandled. So I am saying that it is what it is. We have a lot of people who give them the kudos and the credit, right. have, have, have established clubs, have, these clubs have made progress, um, but now they need support. They need education. They need illumination on how to run a modern football enterprise. That is going to be a responsibility of this new league. We had, we had started that in the, TT, in the TTSL. We had a seminar in financial management. Correct. Of course, we had the normal thing about coaching, education, and so on. But what we need to do in this new league is to um, encourage um, the intellectual engagement of the people who run the clubs, okay, and to fortify by way of education the ability to handle what is now moving away from amateur football right. and so called professional football to truly professional football. Because you said it, eh? we could get a television contract with ESPN. If we put out on the first day one product that has one element of inferiority, we're going to be judged by that and people will turn away. It has to be spot on. And for that to happen, we have to have good people in place to run every aspect of the enterprise. Now, that's a long journey. That's not going to happen tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. right? But it is one that we have to undertake and people who run the clubs have to accept. I can't run it out of the back of my car any, any, anymore. It cannot be a one-man show anymore. I need support. And I have to bring people on board, and there are people out there in my own club. We have had people who, 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 who in Arthur Lockjack, School of Business, come into work for credit in our event management. They gain credit for it. We go to them, and, they, and we, we have had people in UV working in our media. We have Santa Rosa, our television station, if you want to call it that, YouTube. Go and get them. They gain credit. It's free. It's free. Go and access it. But you now have, as, a, as the administrator, as the board, as the owner, as the president, have to be open to all of this and have to be willing to put out the effort to go get it done. Because if it's no longer running under a mango tree, then you need people to help run it. Keith, I, I, I hear you. I feel you. Um, I, I hope everything works out for you for, for Trinidad football. And you're talking from the heart, and it, you're talking about transparency. And viewers, that's what we need, transparency in our um, in Trinidad and Tobago Football Association um, and whatever we do for the kids. And it's all about the, for the kids. I want to thank you so much for being here, bud. Uh, thank you very you so much, much, Steve. No, rather, always a pleasure. Ask me back any time. You ask good questions. All right. And rather, thank you for being always here as well. Always a pleasure. ACTN, thank you for giving us the opportunity. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. 
We do have a Facebook page. You can check us out. We do have an email address, fieldofdreamtt at gmail.com. Um, drop us a line. The show is ended. Go in peace. My name is Steve David. Good night.